Thank you very much, uh, Senator Simidian. Uh, it's now my great uh, pleasure to introduce Assembly Member uh, Mike Fior. Represents California's 42nd Assembly District in Los Angeles County. And in recognition of his leadership uh, in the legislature, Mr. Fior was appointed this uh, year by Assembly Speaker John Perez for the post of Majority Policy Leader. He also chairs the Assembly Judiciary Committee. Prior to being elected to the Assembly in 2006, Assemblymember Fior served on the Los Angeles City Council and worked in the private sector for two of California's leading public interest law firms. He's a graduate of Harvard Law School and brings a wealth of judicial knowledge to his current roles in the California Assembly. Assemblymember Fior is a, an influential member of the Environmental Safety and Toxic Materials Committee, as well as the Budget Committee, and he serves as chair of Budget uh, Committee Number 5 on Public Safety. He has already built a legacy as a skilled champion of civil rights, particularly for the most vulnerable, and as a leader in confronting some of California's greatest infrastructure challenges in public transportation and water conservation. He's here today in his leadership in the state's uh, green chemistry initiative, uh, and as Senator Samidia noted in his work in drafting and carrying forward the vision of AB 1879, which in short is the first effort of any state in the U.S. to grant the California EPA the authority to develop a process for broadly identifying, prioritizing, and taking action on chemicals and products of concern. So without further delay, please join me in welcoming State Assembly Member Mike Fior. So let me begin by with this. Rather than looking at how we design molecules that can treat or hopefully cure cancer, I want to try to come up with a way that all the chemicals that we're surrounded by can't cause cancer and can't cause other kinds of toxicity. Have you heard that quote before? I was listening to the radio a couple days ago as I was driving from my home to catch a plane, and I said, gee, that sounds like a familiar theme. And of course, it was from Professor Anastas, who was, was here. I understand he's not here any longer uh, uh, at this conference. Um, and of course, he's speaking at the federal level. I have a challenge this afternoon. Joe Simidian is not only a spectacular legislator, but he's also a magnificent speaker and pretty much highlighted every issue I wanted to discuss. <laughs> and so my challenge is to earn my keep anyway. Um, and uh, I'm going to pretty much dispose with the eight pages of remarks that I brought with me because they pretty much mirror Joe's comments. So let me build on those comments extemporaneously a little bit because um, it really was a magnificent discussion of all the issues that we're confronting now. There is an opportunity that we have, to which Joe alluded briefly, I want to build on the foundation, to not only be a catalyst for change throughout our state, but also nationally and internationally. And we are at the critical moment that Joe has defined for us. Because the legislation at stake that we've been discussing, Joe's bill and mine, are much like AB 32, California's landmark legislation to combat global warming. Our bills provided a framework. The framework needed to be fleshed out with very precise regulatory language. And we invested a lot of faith in the regulatory process to assure that it was a successful legislative effort. We have an opportunity that is on the verge of being squandered if we don't take action. I went to Washington with a legislative delegation about a year and three quarters ago and met at the White House with President Obama's leading environmental advisor. At that point, I was, my agenda was pretty straightforward. I was trying to seek some additional federal funding to kickstart our process here on the premise that we could be a catalyst for changing the federal paradigm on how we grapple with issues of toxics, of chemicals in the products that we use. Within a couple weeks, it was not causal, it just happened this way, uh, Lisa Jackson, uh, EPA secretary, began to speak in terms of green chemistry being a federal effort, a federal priority. 
California is either going to be the role model on how this effort succeeds, or we're going to be the object lesson on how major interest groups collide and cause gridlock. We can perpetuate the status quo if we choose, or we can start the nation on a very different course. Does anyone in this room, no matter what interest you advocate, doubt the imperative to change from the course we're on? And I find myself listening to Joe and thinking on my own about my, my remarks, wondering if we really need to rekindle the unprecedented coalition that led to the enactment of the legislation in the first place. I mean, let's be real. Representatives of the chemical industry and the Sierra Club walked door to door to urge legislators to enact the legislation that Joe referred to earlier, Joe's bill and mine. I can tell you from a public policy standpoint in Sacramento, Florida, that never happens. And the question is, what happened in the intervening period? Because here's the deal. The regulatory process is at a standstill. Let me be very precise about this, those who aren't aware of this. The regulations were being drafted and then redrafted. There was an iteration of those regulations that emerged in September from a work over the summertime. Those regulations, on my view, were flawed, but they were acceptable, notwithstanding their flaws. Then the regulations went through another iteration. Much of the reason for this is continue, that collision that I described earlier among interests. And then in, in the late fall, emerged regulations that were satisfactory to nobody. And then, the, really, the, the, Hobson had better choices. At that moment, <laughs> at that moment, many of us who were advocating for this paradigm shift were put to the following choice. Do we, for the sake of urgency and speed, push those regulations deeply flawed as they were forward, or do we say these are so inadequate that we need to start all over again. Let me describe why I come to this from a sense of urgency for a moment before I discuss how that choice has, has turned out to, to work. <coughs> Joe began with a theme that should resonate with every person in this room. From the standpoint of the economic, economic development of our state, we need green chemistry and we need to be known as the flagship <laughs> the leader for this. This will spur the innovation and the investment in our state that creates the jobs that we need. That is a core theme that was underlying that collaboration, that marvelous collaboration I, de I described in the Capitol. We also need it for other reasons. When a panel appointed by President Bush identifies the cancer-causing relationship between toxicity in our environment and fetal development, that's when you know that there is a broad <coughs> swath of agreement that we cannot allow people to develop cancer and diabetes and other illnesses which they ought never have contracted. We ought not allow that to continue if we can stop it in the first place, Professor Anastas's point. And yet we are doing that. Here's what urgency means to me. We are Right now, at this moment, because these regulations are not advancing at the speed of light, we are making the decision that some kid's going to have cancer. We're making that decision. We can't identify the kid. We're making the decision. Right now, in an economic crisis, we're making the decision that that job is going to go someplace else that could have been in California if only we had, res had resurrected that collaboration I described earlier. This is unacceptable to me. That stagnation is not why I ran for office. It's not why anybody is here. So call to action time, right? We have a regulatory process that needs to be revived. Now, the budget process in Sacramento, since you know you have scientific experts describing the, the intricacies of this process to you, but from a political standpoint, here's the real world. In the capital right now, the budget crisis is obviously overwhelming everything, including key decisions regarding even staffing at the key agencies we're talking about. And, you know, in many ways that's fair because there's nothing more important than getting our budget taken care of right now from a political standpoint in Sacramento. But very soon, ideally, we will resolve that crisis and move forward to filling in these blanks. And I hope that by our presence today, Joe and I are inspiring everyone in this room to say to people, either yourselves, many of your advocates in Sacramento, or to say to people who represent you that it is intolerable to allow the status quo to continue, because here's what's going to happen otherwise. The business interests, 
that were so thrilled with the idea that we would have this bipartisan green chemistry process move forward hate the idea of these one chemical at a time ban bills, which Joe described so well as requiring members of the legislature to literally stand up, as I've seen speech after speech do, and say, so here's a stack of material on this side of the equation that says this is horrible stuff, we got to get rid of it, and here's this stack that says this is just fine, and by the way, the substitutes for it are worse. Make a decision. One of my colleagues stood up and said, you know, I didn't take advanced chemistry in college. I have no idea who's right in this regard. Shouldn't we have a science-driven process by which to determine which chemicals we allow in the marketplace and which we seek alternatives for? You bet we should. There's no disagreement about that. This agreement is around the details that flow from that. So a call to action on that score. I believe that we have a choice, that the choice right now will lead us in one of two basic directions. Because if we allow things to stagnate and those one chemical at a time ban bills proliferate, we're going to end up, I think, lagging far behind. The rest of the world and other states will swoop in to recapture that which we squandered. We're better than that. This is the state where every major innovation flows from, not the other way around. And the next time any of us goes to Washington to talk to the president's staff or whatever, we want to be able to say, so we're here to add value to an existing program that's very robust. And I think this is the year. I think if by the rough, the fall, maybe at the latest, if we haven't moved forward, bad news. So there was a hearing in Sacramento. I want to conclude with this as we move forward to questions. There was a hearing in Sacramento maybe a month and a half ago or so on the progress of this, the green chemistry approach. And much of what I've said and Joe said was illuminated in that room during those conversations. But there was common ground. And it was expressed sometimes by business interests or environmental interests and sometimes by the legislators who advocate for those interests. And the common ground sounded like this. All right, so maybe what we should do to rekindle this process is to begin to move forward in increments. Rather than saying this vast comprehensive process must emerge perfectly formed in order for us to move forward, let's take steps. For example, we know a lot about particular chemicals that are dangerous. Let's start with those and go through the processes that are outlined in this legislation. That may be one place from which to begin. Um, so at this moment, I hope that one has been, we've been provocative enough to spur additional questions and candid conversation. I've, I've taught um, in other contexts, and I will call on you if you do not raise provocative questions. Um, uh, so for today, that's my, that's my extemporaneous effort to follow up on Joe's uh, job here. Let me, let's, let me see, does anybody, especially people who have been involved in this process, want to add to this conversation? I hope so. I know that wasn't the resounding applause line moment, but I was really hoping like more of a teacher here. Let's, let's sort of have a conversation. <coughs> Obviously not. <laughs> That's a, we can't get more provocative than that. <laughs> okay, so here's a specific issue. Yeah. You know, I mean, all of us agree with the principles that you guys have, have outlined, okay? So with a particular problem I've been involved in, I think this is a good example of the, of the difficulties you're talking about, right? A lot of us have been trying to get methyl iodide banned, okay? It, everybody agrees this stuff is toxic, you know? The, the people who support it, the argument is, well, it's toxic, but we can handle it anyway, okay? So there was a scientific review, I mean, just like you said, right? And the scientific review, you know, it went through great detail, came out very negative. This stuff is really dangerous. The Department of Pesticide Regulation read the review and decided that, you know, they would do something else. So, what, you know, what's the solution to that process? Well, one solution, and, and I keep alluding to things that Joe said, so let me allude to something else he said. Uh, one solution is empowering what is called the Green Ribbon Science Panel. Now, for those people, that, I know that's like inside baseball to many people here, but one of the key elements of the legislation that both Joe and I pursued was that there'd be this green ribbon science panel of experts who independently and based on tremendous knowledge, scientific, not political expertise, that they would define many of the core ideas and flesh them out. Now, that science panel was not adequately consulted in the course of the development of the regulations that we're talking about. And they complained about it, kind of quietly, 
Now, I think there is going to be a reinvigorated Green Ribbon Science Panel. That's a good thing in the context of our legislation. Now, to be real, the pesticide issue that you cite, and I've been in a recent hearing on this issue, and I'm appalled by the dynamic that you accurately describe. You know, John Freund came to testify in our committee about this. Um, pesticides are not literally part of this regime because one of the agreements we made was we would have legislation that, was not, that governed um, substances that were not already regulated by existing state agencies, so pesticides have their own regime. That is maybe sort of a footnote to your question, but the point is, in that world, I think that's an error. What, what, what transpired was an error, and it's being, there, the fact that I know about this in some detail should tell you about the level of uh, how conspicuous this issue has become among legislators in Sacramento. Leaving that aside, the Green Ribbon Science Panel, I think, is the antidote to the problem that you are describing in our world. And it's up to Joe and myself and others to be sure that that commitment is adhered to as the process moves forward. I have time for one, one more question before yeah. the airplane awaits. Great. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that. And if, if, if there were, is yeah. there? Do you want to take a question, Joe? Great. Yeah. Of course. That too. Can I ask you the question? Is that okay? <laughs> sure. <Yeah>. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, I'm. Shall I go first? Oh yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right, I'm Joe Guth. I'm a member of the Green Ribbon Science Panel that you're mentioning, and I'm here at the Berkeley Center for Green Chemistry. Uh, and we reached the same decision, I guess, that you did, which was not to support the final regulations that, that came out. And that was, as you mentioned, a very painful, uh, difficult decision. But I think you were going to tell us how you reached that. Yes, you know, it's, you're right. Yeah. Because, because I, I just was talking, I, well, I I'm very get curious there. about that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I started to describe what, what urgency meant, and then I went on to something else. So I said many times in meetings with folks, in the course of that discussion, because you know, as you know, I weighed in a lot in the course of the regulatory process. Um, that the, when I defined urgency, I think for most people in this room, it sounded as though I was going to err on the side of getting something in place just to begin because the stakes are so high. The, however, on the scale, the other side won. And the reason that the scales tipped in the other direction was this. I, uh, I mentioned that we can be the role model or the object lesson. And I felt there were so many core deficiencies in just the, the basic paradigm that was reflected in those regulations that we would get the nation off to a horrible start. And just to give you one example of what I mean, in, embedded in the last iteration of those regulations was a concept, it seemed to me at least, that we should be reverting to um, the, the notion that we're going to assess causation. We're going to determine, did, does, does this chemical cause this problem? The whole risk assessment phenomenon. That's not what green chemistry is about. This is about hazard traits, right? Very different paradigm. Not acceptable to go back in time and to enshrine as an example this. So that's why I was an advocate, reluctant as heck, I have to say, for saying, no, we have, to, we have to start over again. And I'm hopeful that with a new administration, we can do so productively. And so much, you know, I must say the Green Ribbon team needs not only to be waiting to be consulted, but needs to be a catalyst pushing forward, saying we have to move faster. You know, and so I hope that, that you'll play a key role in that. So listen, I unfortunately, I need to, I'm actually a little bit late to go to the airport on what's already probably a, a kind of a rotten weather day. But, but listen, there could not be a better Senate leader on this issue than Joe Semidia. Couldn't be. He and I have been able to forge, as Joe mentioned, a friendship, but from your standpoint, more importantly, a professional collaboration that both of us, I think, are deeply committed to maintaining throughout the course of our respective tenures. All of us need, need to work together as a team. I hope that if you have ideas as to how to jumpstart these processes and fine tune them, that you will find us. And I will give you my cell phone number as I'm here, which is 310, it's here for like the next day or two will be that number. Um, <laughs> 3, 310-367-9558, 367-9558. I give that to you for a reason. Uh, I, I hope that this, maybe some people who didn't want to speak conspicuously in this setting will be inspired to say, you know, if you do X, Y, and Z, you're really going to be on the right track. And that might change the rule for somebody in this state. 
Thanks very much.